Hello, everyone, and thank you for joining us for today's presentation. Before we go ahead and kick off our presentation, I wanted to cover a little bit of housekeeping issues with everyone. Um, we will be recording today's presentation, so uh, if you would like a copy of the recording for review or to share with a colleague, keep an eye on your inbox in the day or so following the event for a link to that recording and other links um, that may be pertinent to the content that we're covering today. Also, we will be saving some time at the end of today's presentation for questions and or q and I know we've got a pretty full agenda with uh, multiple speakers today, um, but we will try to do our best to get to questions and comments at the end of the presentation. So if you have any for any of our panelists, please feel free to direct them either via the chat and or the Q&A window, and we'll do our best to get to those. So thank you for joining us for this uh, first part of a four-part series uh, with Google Cloud, Itopia, Haiku, and Liquidware on modernizing VDI and simplifying IT on Google Cloud. And I'm going to go ahead and hand the ball off over to um, Brad Fisher, who's going to take us through today's presentation. Awesome. I appreciate that, Ray. Hey there, and thank you everyone for joining us today. My name is Bradley Fisher, and I'm a partner sales manager here at Google. I'm joined today by three key members of our Google Cloud partner ecosystem, Itopia, Liquidware, and Haiku. Today we'll be discussing how our technologies come together to enable you to modernize your VDI workloads leveraging Google Cloud. Before I begin, I want to introduce the full team that you'll be hearing from today. We've got James Riley, VP of Strategic Alliances from Itopia, Thomas Luuswa, Director of Alliances at Liquidware, and Shiva Raha, Product Marketing Manager at Haiku. They're all very knowledgeable members of Google's cloud family and should have some very interesting content to provide. So without further ado, I'll jump into the agenda that we'll cover today. First, I'm gonna quickly share uh, some of what I see as the key benefits of moving workloads from on-premises infrastructure onto Google Cloud. Second, we'll dive into how Itopia makes it easy to deliver virtual desktops and apps on any device, anywhere, all on Google Cloud's global network. Third, Liquidware will show us how to make the migration of VDI user profiles simple and easy to manage at scale. And finally, Haiku will be presenting on how they enable continuous data backup and protection for your Google Cloud deployments, simply provided as a service. We'll also have a live Q&A after the presentation, but please feel free to leave questions in the chat and our teammates will provide answers throughout the webinar. Lastly, we'll be providing $800 in Google Cloud credit to all attendees, which you can action on some, which you can use to action on some fantastic information that you'll hear today to get started leveraging the power of Google Cloud. So I'd like to kick off the presentation with a quick introduction to Google Cloud from my personal perspective. Just for context, I've been working and hosting for the past seven years. In that time, I've specialized in both dedicated and private virtualized hosting, as well as practice solution architecture for two of the major other public cloud providers. I won't give any names. But I came to Google Cloud about three years ago and for a very specific reason. I saw an elegance in their approach to cloud computing. The work that I'd been conducting up until that point had in large part been focused on optimizing and tweaking aspects of immutable structures, which by and large, when you stripped away the fancy bells and whistles, were still operating much as they had for the past decade or so. And what I saw in Google was a forward thinking perspective. They really looked at everything in terms of digital transformation. And for me, that was really exciting. It was a modern way of looking at cloud as more than simply hosting, but as a platform for building and running the experiences of a company's most valuable assets. And much in the same way as Google looks at how it offers its most valuable assets to its customers. You see, to the outside world, it did seem like Google was late to the cloud game. But after some research, I realized that Google had actually been at the forefront of some of the cloud's most important and powerful technologies. And they developed these capabilities to run on their own billion user plus offerings, but we're now making these technologies available to be leveraged by companies everywhere. And the aim was to allow companies to build cultures of innovation and, ag and agility. They created elegant offerings that avoid a lot of the unnecessary operations that had been commonplace for so long, allowing users to focus on optimizing their business processes, customer facing applications, most importantly, innovation. And, Google's cloud, and Google Cloud's tools were created to provide customers with malleable options to simplify these operations and enhance, and enhance outcomes. So whether it's tools like Anthos, which allow companies to seamlessly deploy and run containerized environments across both on-prem and other public clouds, 
or taking standardized workloads and optimizing them through intelligent add-on services like machine learning APIs, Chronicle security offering, API management systems like Apigee, or completely reimagining your environment and reconstructing your applications to run through the elegance of our containerized or serverless platform, Google has the tools to improve how people run their business. And really best of all, Googlers are committed to being true consultants whose aim is to help our customers get the best out of their workloads and deliver the same kind of reliable and performant experience as we do ourselves. And through partners like those you'll hear from in just a moment, you'll see how easy it is to begin leveraging the advantages of Google Cloud. And so with that, I'd like to turn it over to James Riley to present on how customers like yourselves can simply and elegantly deploy virtual desktops and apps on Google Cloud with Itopia. Thank you very much, Brad. I appreciate uh, that introduction. So to kind of give a high level overview of Itopia, uh, we are a desktop as a service platform that is 100% dedicated to deploying virtual desktops and apps on Google Cloud. What we find with most enterprises like yourself that are seeking to modernize the VDI experience, uh, we give you that avenue to migrate to GCP. And what we find is most of our customers are looking for three uh, main success criteria. One is being able to reduce the total cost of ownership, um, not only from the hardware that you may have used on premises for your current VDI solutions, but even the management resources required and the expertise uh, that come with that total cost of ownership. Second is that we wanna be able to streamline the IT management. So if we can reduce the number of employees required to manage a solution, if we can reduce the amount of expertise needed and really simplify uh, this entire deployment, uh, that's the value that we can provide to your organization. Lastly, is being able to deliver global business continuity. So being able to deliver a great end user experience, uh, regardless if you are you know, deploying graphical intent applications, call centers, whatever it may be, really delivering that great end user experience is key to delivering a great VDI experience hosted on Google Cloud. So we really developed this new operating model that doesn't only bring seamless remote productivity, but it's also fully secure, right? So we do a lot with integrating to enterprise customers, active directories, uh, and really kind of have a, a detailed process that makes sure you guys are fully secure while taking advantage of all the policies and the settings you've placed over the years for your organization. Uh, it's very cost effective and, and that really leads into being 100% OPEX. So being able to stand up an environment uh, literally within uh, five to 10 minutes, being deployed in around you know, an hour to hour and a half you can literally have an enterprise grade solution hosted on Google Cloud uh, within a day. And it's very easy to manage. And of course, it's available anywhere that Google Cloud compute and data centers reside. So to kind of give a high level overview of Itopia, um, Itopia is an orchestration and management platform that delivers the Microsoft Remote Desktop Services technology hosted on Google Cloud, giving you the ability to access secure remote desktops and apps that are available on any device anywhere. So the Microsoft RDS technology uh, is a traditional technology that supports millions of users on-prem as well as all the hyperscale, all the hyperscale clouds today. What makes it unique is that we're able to host this on Google Cloud, so we're able to start to integrate some of the great Google services like Google Manage Active Directory, BigQuery, and even utilizing the networking for virtual private clouds, firewalls, and load balancers. So combining these two powerful technologies is really where Itopia sits. As a management and orchestration platform that really simplifies the entire experience. So you don't have to become a Google Cloud engineer expert overnight, um, nor do you have to become a Windows expert overnight as well. 
Itopia automates over 300 tasks related to managing both of these environments, uh, which allows you, again, to, to, to deliver that great end user experience for the best cost and managing it uh, very simply throughout the entire process. So the way the service works is very traditional um, to probably the VDI you may have today. You have your worker, the worker can be issued a device. We can support bring your own device, working with Chromebooks or any other device, which could be Linux, Windows, Macs, Android. It does not matter. Uh, we can actually spin this environment up very confidently where it would access the remote desktop services hosted in the Google Cloud Data Center, and we can deliver a Windows 10 desktop experience. So you can be fully immersed into a desktop, have all the settings, and make that a persistent environment for your users. Or we can stream a single Windows application or a handful of applications uh, that can be delivered as a remote app. So you have lots of flexibility um, you know, to deliver this through a client, through a URL, uh, through a full desktop, or just with a remote app. So tier one sysadmins can manage this entire console and can support hundreds or even thousands of users. So the idea is that you don't have to go back into the Google Cloud Platform. You don't have to log into a Windows server, but you can use our control panel uh, to manage an entire deployment or several deployments uh, while giving role-based access to your various administrators. Again, simplifying the management and delivery of this technology. What you'll find is that Itopia is the only platform in the market that's 100% dedicated to running these services on Google Cloud today. Uh, the reason why we made this decision is because we do feel it provides the lowest latency for all of your users. We feel that it provides the best security and can match any other hyperscale cloud in the market. And ultimately, they have the strongest fiber network in the world. They have many different points of presence. So even customers that have low bandwidth, once you actually connect to these Google Cloud data centers, you're really able to ride their backbone to really increase the user experience, again, by taking advantage of the network that they've developed. So what I wanna do here is I wanna pause for a quick, um, a quick demo of the environment, and let me just share my screen so I can show you that experience. Okay, so the screen that you're seeing here shows basically a virtual desktop, a full Windows 10 desktop experience that's running inside a browser. So you can actually customize this URL for your organization. You can spin up a full Windows 10 desktop with the image that's appropriate for your organization. And you can actually uh, experience this through the, the entire uh, through the entire remote desktop, okay? So what you'll find as well is that you can also stream individual applications. So maybe you have developers that want to access just Visual Studio Code. We can do that, or we can host the Office applications like you see here. So again, we give you the flexibility and the options for how you want to deliver this experience. You can also deliver this experience through a RDP client. So some of you all may be familiar with this. And again, this client is accessible through any of the previous devices that I've mentioned. And again, we can stream a single remote app or we can spin up a full desktop. So again, you have full flexibility on how you wanna package up this environment and ultimately deliver it to your users. So the way that we actually create this environment that you'll see is through our Cloud Automation Stack, which is the Itopia orchestration platform. 
So I have a test environment set up. You can see that there's one user online that happens to be myself. And then you can see all the different deployment details. One thing I do want to point out that is unique to Itopia is that we can build a single deployment and we can span it across several regions. So one thing that that helps with is that we can easily spin up a disaster recovery deployment or we can spin up one, let's say, in the East US while your customers uh, and your headquarters are in West US. So in case if anything ever goes down, you can quickly spin up the additional environment. Uh, also, if your company is a multinational company, and let's say you have users that reside in Europe, in the US, or somewhere in APAC, we could actually deploy this same deployment across regions and give your users a great user experience. Now, a couple of that administrative things I want to quickly point out is that you can actually have role-based access. So when it comes to managing this environment, you can actually invite some of your other team members, uh, specify their role and which deployment they work on. So again, you centralize this whole experience while still giving access to the appropriate IT admins that need to help support this. And then lastly, you can manage several deployments, as you see here, from one control panel. So for whatever reason, if you had subsidiaries or additional deployments that need to be created, it could all be done right here very quickly. Now, the two main modules that I want to point out today in our platform uh, really are surrounded around how do we manage the entire remote desktop services deployment? And that's what you'll find in cloud desktops. So you can do things like manage your users, which you'll see here, and you can handle all the operations from editing a user, resetting passwords, logging them off, and you can quickly come in here and you can see what security groups and what applications that user has access to. Also, you can track applications, security groups, but one thing I wanna focus on is folders and shares. So this is another place where you can quickly set up this environment to have a very dynamic folder system and storage system as well. And then collection pools. Collection pools are important because it allows us to granularly break down your employee base. So imagine if we had accounting, operations, sales, you can give sales a full desktop where maybe you only stream to accounting the appropriate ERP systems and accounting systems they use. So again, you have full flexibility and then you can get very granular on how you set up the infrastructure per your different um, you know, departments within an organization. And one thing I will point out is that we do have auto scaling. So we can literally take a machine and the machine can grow vertically as more users increase, so we can increase CPU and RAM. We can also scale out horizontally. So after we, 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 after we reach the maximum number of users, let's say it was 20 per virtual machine, we can actually spin up additional virtual machines. So it's very important. We can support a traditional one VM, one user model. However, we really gain cost control and allow you to really scale the environment um, at, a, at a price point that makes the most sense by being able to share resources across users. Now, the next module I wanna discuss is really within our cloud manager. So this is everything related to running the infrastructure for your deployment. So as you see here, we have our deployment that spans across multiple regions. You can see high level overview and description, and then you can quickly come in here and you can edit you know, your machines. So you can see all the details as well as run all of the different CRUD operations. You can create machines, stop, start, restart, you can review the history of the RAM, CPU, and make sure and be proactive that this environment is set up to give your users the best experience. Now, one thing I will point out is server uptime. So this is the other way that it's very important for us to manage cost. So let's say our accounting team works from nine to five. We can create a special instance where we can actually schedule resources to turn on at 5 a.m., turn off at 8 p.m., as you see here. So on the cloud, you pay for what you use. 
So anytime we can turn off virtual machines, we are actually saving money outside of these set parameters. And it's very easy to set up your own schedule. You come here, you name it, give a description, select your virtual machines, hit go. And again, the system does everything for you automatically. So combining our auto scaling plus our scheduling really allows customers to save anywhere from 30 all the way up to 60% of their compute cost. Now, just a couple more things I want to point out here. One is snapshots. So as you see here, uh, we integrate traditional snapshots from Google, but what you'll see from our partner and a deep technical integration that we're working on for Q4 is with our partner Haiku. So you would actually be able to uh, access the Haiku technology right here from our platform. And the biggest difference from a Haiku perspective is they utilize the cold storage in Google, allowing you to save upwards of 300% on setting snapshots up for your environment. And we'll be glad to help you integrate this in the meantime, before our integration is built into our platform. And then of course, we can connect with all sorts of VPNs and we do help all of our customers build images. Now, the last thing I'll point out is really the insights and the reporting that you get from these environments. So you'll see here, you can see different user activity. You can even look at file activity and you can even understand you know, application activity. But really, the great integration we have here comes back to Google Cloud. So right here, you can actually configure BigQuery to your environment. This allows us to bring in a tremendous amount of data where you can see how many users logged on, where they're logging on from, how many times they connected and disconnected from a session, as well as seeing things like you know, the duration of their sessions as well. So we can create some very dynamic reports for your organization that match or exceed what you may have gotten from Citrix or VMware in the past. So this concludes the demonstration and I'll be glad to go back to the presentation to wrap up. So just to kind of a quick overview of how we're highlighting this solution is we're looking at going from this legacy on-premises VDI deployment that has a lot of different layers in our technology stack, seems to be costly to operate, right? And from a time standpoint, it takes time to procure, set up, and test where we can do all of this literally within 24 hours. So we're helping you modernize this experience with something that's very easy, simple, and hopefully that you saw it's a very elegant inner user face as well as allows you to scale. So you could be at 10 users today or 1,000 users tomorrow. Just very quickly, we're fast. We'll get you set up within 90 minutes. It's simple. A tier one sysadmin can manage this. We're super flexible. We can create new ADs. We can help build new images. We can even integrate to existing active directories. Again, we're super efficient. We're going to do things to help you save money on compute. And we're also going to provide over 300 tasks that we automate for Google Cloud, as well as the Microsoft RDS technology. And lastly, we're very secure. First, by leveraging the technology from Google Cloud. Second, being able to integrate with your existing group policies. And lastly, being able to quickly apply additional settings to this environment. Some of our customers uh, that you can see here from Ultimate Software and TELUS International, uh, we do work across the globe and we are industry agnostic, uh, but again, we'll be glad to meet with you later and dig in deeper on how we can meet your specific use case. So on saying that, we've touched on Haiku. I also now want to introduce Liquidware and Tumas who's going to take you through really how you can assess the environment before you migrate to a Google Cloud and Itopia and some of the ongoing dynamic management features they can provide to really kind of give you that full end-to-end -end experience to deliver this to the cloud. So I'll be glad to introduce Thomas to everyone here now. Thank you, James. It's a, it's a great pleasure to be here. Hi, everyone. Um, for those of you who don't know Liquidware, um, we have been focusing since our inception, it's been almost 10 years now, in helping our customers uh, adopt the next generation desktop. So we provide solutions that are designed to 
to basically simplify and and uh, eliminate challenges to move to the next generation. The, back in the time where we created, it was all about VDI. Um, but in the past couple of years, two, three years, we, um, we started to notice the uh, emergence of cloud desktop. And so we started investing time and dev and resource and also uh, partnering with, with pioneers like Itopia that were really leading the, um, the um, I would say, the innovation around the concept of cloud desktop. So today our core focus as, as transitional move and really what we aim to be is, is um, to a, a company that provides solution that extend Itopia platform automation orchestration with our enterprise desktop management. We really build to manage desktop at scale and, and simplify. Now what we're doing is doing that with cloud native solutions that will enable you to move very easily and manage your environment at scale once you move them to, uh, to GCP managed by Atopia. Our core focus throughout all that is user experience. So for us, that's, that's the main driver, is to ensure that as you're going through this transition, you're, uh, you're delivering the best user experience you can based on, on, on Google Cloud and Atopia. So for the, the, the next few slides, I'm gonna give you a, a fairly high level overview of what we do and how it can help. One thing I need to remind you is um, this is part one of a four series. And the reason we did that is because obviously there's four of us uh, in this webinar. There's a lot of things to discuss. We're also very aware that some of you might be at a different stage of, of cloud adoption. Some of you may already have some production and you're expanding or just thinking about it. So we didn't want to cram all of that into one webinar that we, where everybody's speed talking and, and get stuck for two hours. So keep an eye for the, um, the upcoming series where we will be diving deeper into each subject, whether it's the management side, the migration part, uh, the backup and the R with IQ, et cetera, et cetera. And now I need to figure out how to, can... here we go, <laughs> sorry. So uh, what do we do? So today Liquidware provide three solutions around adaptive workspace management. The first one is called Profile Unity. And it's all about the user environment management or profile management as you may, I may, may, um, may know it. So it's all about moving everything that makes your desktop your desktop. So anything short of the compute power or, or what Windows and the application have installed, but everything you do or your admin are, are giving you that makes your desktop your desktop, whether it's settings, preferences, shortcuts, um, your signature in, in, your mail, in your mail system, the, uh, the favorite you've added to, uh, to your browser and so on and so forth. Everything that comprises that for us is you and that what makes your desktop. So Profile Unity is designed to manage that, and help you um, uh, migrate, but also manage that ongoing. Application layering is provided through a solution called FlexUp. So application layering, uh, if you're not familiar, it's all about, it's the new way of delivering application. Um, the ability to deliver an application almost on the fly without having to go through what I would call the the, the usual or, or the legacy uh, process where you actually use a tool like SSEM or, or manually install an application on an OS. And as you'll see, it fits perfectly with the, um, the dynamics and, and the expectation of flexibility and simplicity when it comes down to moving to cloud desktop. Finally, we have a solution called Stratosphere that delivers uh, monitoring and diag diagnostics. So on that one is all about data and understanding how you access your desktop, what's going on, and again, more importantly, user experience, um, performance-based metrics, uh, KPIs, and so on and so forth. So I wanted to touch, before diving into each of those three products, I wanted to touch quickly on what it means to be cloud native, because we <clears throat> understand that there is a lot of noise and it's it's a, a cloud desktop has definitely become uh, a buzzword. And, and you've seen through Itopia how truly invested and, and truly integrated they are with GCP. So I wanted to briefly touch on what it means for us at Liquidware. So as far as, as integration, obviously you can run uh, all products on Google Cloud. That goes without saying, and it's usually the, the baseline. 
Um, but we've also invested or, or developed a number of features. For example, using Profile Unity and FlexUp, user profile application and user data can reside on cloud storage, aka buckets. Um, it's basically natively supported. You can store that directly in there. The benefits are both in flexibility, uh, but also cost. As save you a lot of cost and doesn't require you to actually set up a file server, basically doing that the old way. And obviously this will this will get integrated into the back end of, of Itopia and management platform as you've seen uh, James have touched on how you could create file and, and folders for users and so on and so forth. UX also have, have evolved and added we've added features to to be more tightly integrated with with um, with Google Cloud and Itopia. It usually starts with assessments where we can tell you, for example, if nothing else as, as a basic tool, what do you have, what do you use? So you can determine what is the best uh, type of machine you're gonna need, whether it's from a compute or memory or, or this space, just that. And you can best align or optimize the designs on the back end. It's also something we're gonna keep tracking as you move on and we'll be able to track uh, how, how much the resource are used, but also, and very important, and I'll touch base on that even later, user experience. Again, you always go back to user experience, and if something goes bump in the night, understanding why, where's my bottleneck, so you can troubleshoot it. Right, so Stratosphere. Uh, as I mentioned, all about data. Uh, Stratosphere has a wealth of information available. Um, so obviously, we'll track things which I would consider uh, baseline or basics that you can get from anywhere, um, your performance, for example. So we'll track CPU and memory usage, and we know when a user connects to a machine or not, but we go a lot deeper than that. Um, we are able to, we have about, I think it's somewhere between four or 500 different data points that we collect. It could be as generic as tracking the session duration of a user, but it can also go as deep as understanding what GPO have slowed down your logging process or what event logs tied to an application is making the application to become non-responding or crashing the system. Overall, there's many use cases for Stratosphere. I wanted to categorize them or at least summarize them in, in two or three different different use cases. The main one, something I mentioned before, is, is the onboarding process. So overall understanding what do user have, what do they use, actually use, so you can determine what do they need. And that could be at the application side, could be as simple as understanding what application I installed, but which one are you currently using? And that in terms are gonna help us into a, more like an application strategy. If you see an application being used by a subset of users, less than 10%, for example, you may decide when you start uh, building your architecture with Itopia to put those application, to develop those application directly instead of putting that in the base image. That reduce your image management problems. It, it avoid the, um, I would say, the multiplication of adding 27, 50 different base image depending on on the use case. So all that intelligence helps you um, be more optimized and, and productive. But it will ultimately also help you save cost as you don't need to pay a license if only 10% of your users are using it. Um, operation and first tier support is also a big a big focus of ours. Here the 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 um, the focus is rather on the problems or the issue. It's, it's more about understanding when something goes bump in the night and helping you through a number of tools. And I put a couple examples in there, but quickly uh, provide first, second, and third uh, tier supports. Really be able, we use um, intelligent uh, metrics and, and KPI and indexes to point you to where's my bottleneck. That could be done at a single user level to really kind of look at what's going on in the past, I don't know, two hours, 24 hours, and understanding what's what's causing the problem. But maybe even more important uh, for us, especially when you're moving an entire infrastructure from premises to cloud where you don't necessarily have this visibility. And there could be that slight feeling of jumping off a cliff where you feel like you're, you're giving up control. That's the purpose of Stratosphere is, is to not give up on that control and truly understand what's going on so your IT support team can provide the same level of, of um, monitoring and support as they were on-premises. And finally, there's an, a number of other use cases, some of them in, including what I call trending uh, and also validation optimization. A quick example of that is 
what I call the before and after picture. You were planning to move users from on-premises to, to, uh, to the cloud. How do you define success? Well, if that works, great. Uh, that's one way to look at it. But if users are, are jumping from a 20 seconds login time to a five minute login time, it's not going to work. So a couple of reports, and we built a number of, of uh, specific custom reports for uh, Itopia and GCP, is the ability to gauge that and, and understand what is the impact of the change. That could be moving from premises to cloud again, but it could be also just a change of, of OS or an upgrade in the application um, or changing the instant type changing the machine, the storage, whatever you have in mind. Ability to uh, take a point in time before the change and compare it to after the change and quickly see the impact, positive or negative. So it's a great validation tool, great way to, um, I would say, define success. It could be something, for example, you tie to uh, a POC or a pilot and you want to just know if, it's, if it works. Great way to uh, remove the guess out of the, uh, the equation. Next is Profile Unity. So I wanted to, again, Profile Unity could be an entire section by itself, but I wanted to just to point out a couple things. For Profile Unity, Profile Management is something that uh, is inherently available from everywhere, every platform, Windows and, and Microsoft, et cetera, have their own. Um, we deliver profiles slightly differently. For us, everything is centered around the user. Think about it as follow me profile. We don't care about the platform. We don't care about the OS to some extent, as long as you stay in Windows. We'll deliver the profile that follow the user, which means that to some extent, there is no migration. We don't care. You log into a physical or on-premises desktop today. You log into an Itopia VM tomorrow. The profile is going to follow you. We also context aware um, and, and very flexible in, in what you what you move. For example, and I use that picture here to describe it, we know and will be aware that some portion of your profile, GP or whatever, uh, are only applicable in, let's say, your own environment and won't or should not be applied um, in once you move to, to, uh, to Google Cloud. So we can set it up in the system so it will be done automatically. You don't even have to think, remove, move, change, etc. We can have that universal profile that will stay attached to the user and will select automatically which pieces of the profile get applied when and where. Finally, uh, application learning. I mentioned it um, briefly, but this is truly powerful. Think about it as um, the best way I can describe application layering for those of you who are not familiar with it is it's like, it's kind of like how you uh, download an app on your smartphone today, except with enterprise management on the back end. Allows you to deliver an, an app almost on the fly, next logon. Um, we do that by simply put, we redirect an application onto a VHD file. VHD file is a file format under Microsoft that has the property that it behaves like a disk. When you log into your session, we mount that disk. Now, this part is something that when working with Itopia gets involved in the back, back end or backgrounds. It's something that administrator will find useful to either A, reduce and simplify the image management, build one image based on compute power that affects, uh, that, that you're going to attach to X number of user groups but then have FlexApp being delivered based on who you are on what group. Simplifies a ton the management. It's also something we can feed into the application delivery capabilities that, that um, Itopia has. Same concept. We can have today an application that you don't have, uh, you don't have and you want to add tomorrow. We can FlexApp it and all it takes from the, the user perspective or the user point, point of view is log off, log on to his web or RDS clients and bing, it's there. Very easy, uh, very powerful. And that's that's about it from my end. I just wanted to point out a couple of use cases. Most of them I mentioned. Um, so I'm going to um, breeze on that really quickly to give enough time to, to Aiku and their presentation. One thing I'll mention on that one is the last one, which I haven't touched about. Um, we call it health check. Health check is a great way to, I would say, to um, get an idea of what's going on. Something we've been doing um, systematically in any, I would say, pilot, POC, and first deployments. And the concept is very simple. 
it's something that um, I would encourage you to consider if you're even curious about it. Call us, uh, we'll take one week. We'll deploy Stratosphere, just run the data for one week, then we'll come back and tell you exactly what's going on. And typically you would do that if you have concern, right? Or if any users are complaining about uh, the usual something is slow uh, and I don't know, I'm not quite sure when or what it is, but it's just slow. If you're getting, if you're facing with, with that type of, of scenarios, uh, keep us in mind. We'll just go in, run, run Stratosphere for a week and we'll tell you exactly what's going on in your environment and, and where are your bottlenecks. And with this, I'm going to turn uh, away to, uh, sorry, turn um, um, turn the mic over to um, Shiva at Itopia, um, who's going to uh, present their solution. Thank you very much, Thomas. Glad to be here. All right, so let me just start with... Uh, a quick overview of how Haiku can basically integrate with this overarching story. Because on a high level, if you ask who Haiku is, we are a multi-cloud data protection solution, and we have a, uh, you know, a, a huge overarching story with regards to how you get to protect your data wherever wherever it resides. But the point here is, how does that whole data protection story fit into? Uh, the virtual desktop environment hosted on Google. So let me just quickly, uh, you know, jump back to Jane's story of how Itopia seamlessly provisions your Windows desktops or Windows applications from almost like a, just like a couple of clicks, right? Now, what if in addition to just provisioning your desktops and applications on your GCP environment, you had the ability to seamlessly protect those uh, you know, desktops are applications, especially if they're persistent environments. And what if your end users had the ability to recover lost files, such as spreadsheets or like document files uh, in, a, in, an, in an extremely seamless fashion, right? And you don't have to imagine that because that is exactly what Haiku does uh, when integrated with um, your Itopia's VDI environment or the Itopia's ability to provision your uh, Windows desktops and Windows applications on your GCP environment. Um, now, just to take a step back, uh, to give you a brief introduction of who we are, uh, what Haiku Protege is, is we, we basically provide a data protection solution in a multi-cloud environment. Um, now, starting with GCP, we are basically 100% uh, focused on your entire GCP instances where we get to discover your entire projects, we get to discover your, uh, your, your entire inventory of uh, GCP instances or otherwise known as GCP VMs. We, and, and once we discover them, we actually have the ability to automatically protect your uh, uh, VMs in an application consistent manner in a policy-based protection, right? So that is exactly what we do. Uh, in addition to that, we also have the ability to discover your on-prem resources, could be your virtual machines running on VMware or uh, the uh, hyper-converged infrastructure such as Nutanix or even physical workloads running on your Windows platforms. And we have the ability to move them seamlessly onto your GCP environment in an application consistent manner. And this is a key role where Haiku Protege works in order to ensure that all of your applications are cloud ready or uh, to put it more uh, in, in a relevant fashion, I would say it, it is our job to ensure that your workloads running on your on-prem infrastructure are GCP ready. And that is our primary goal here. Now, how do we do this? We basically have three major components. The first is we offer our solution purely as a service. Uh, we offer our GCP data protection service uh, on GCP itself, and our billing is integrated, our Haiku's billing is basically integrated with GCP's billing. The second major component is we are totally integrated with your GCP platform. We are a cloud native solution for GCP where we have this ability to leverage your underlying platforms, such as your snapshots, your integrated access management to provide you a seamless experience in, in protecting your GCP workloads. And last but not the least, we have our own secret sauce 
in differentiating ourselves from our competition. And, and I'll be talking more about these points um, in, in, in the summary slide, but, but just to give you a high level overview of how G, Haiku for GSP make, you know, truly works are these three simple com components. Now, when it comes to as a service model, we basically have a purely uh, data protection as a service offered on GCP. What this means is as an end user, you don't have to go through any installation or upgrades, period. I mean, you, when you, I mean, I don't want to pick any names here, but when you take our competition, when they say that they're uh, offered as a service and, 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 and they're purely a data protection as a service, they're basically moving their problems from on-prem to cloud where you still have to install those components manually in the GCP environment, which basically makes no sense because when you're moving your workload to the cloud, you're, you're focused on simplifying your, your entire IT infrastructure. And, and going through these minutiae of you know, performing manual in, in, installation and configuration and setup is, is a pointless endeavor when it comes to uh, you know, uh, you know, having, hosting your workloads on GCP. So in that regard, Haiku for GCP truly guarantees that you don't have any installation or upgrades or even sizing for that matter. Now, the second best part about uh, having our solution as a service is we are integrated with GCP Marketplace. So it basically takes, uh, you know, a, a matter of minutes for you to just go go to the GCP Marketplace and subscribe to our service. And the best part is we are also integrated with GCP billing. So you don't need to wait for a separate bill from Haiku. Our our entire billing infrastructure is integrated with GCP billing. So you would basically get just one, uh, you know, a single itemized bill. Now, when I say we are purpose built for GCP, what does that really mean? Uh, so, Haiku for GCP is a cloud native solution. It's a GCP native solution where we make use of GCP's persistent disk snapshots for application consistent and crash consistent backups. As a matter of fact, we actually enable GCP snapshots to achieve uh, application or data consistency, and we also uh, enable, enhance GCP snapshots in several fashions. For instance, if you want to do a file and folder level recovery, you can definitely make use of Haiku to enhance these snapshots to instantaneously recover all those, uh, you know, individual files or directories. Uh, we also integrate with GCP's integrated access management, where you as an end user don't have to configure any of those uh, user permissions or settings, because once you have your GCP's infrastructure set up for your user logins, we will be able to inherit those user information and permissions, and your end user can seamlessly log into our service, and he'll only be able to view the resources that he has authorization to. So you don't have to do any configuration or setup or assign user permissions. Everything is automatically inherited by Haiku. And last but not the least, Haiku also makes use of the GCP object storage to store your application consistent and crap, you know, your data consistent backups. So we make use of your GCP snapshots, but in the most minimalistic fashion, right? Uh, if you want to have more snapshots, then, then fine, we can allow you uh, to have or retain more snapshots. But 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 at, but it's but at its core. Uh, Haiku basically makes use of uh, or a minimalistic use of snapshots and it basically ensures that your your backups are stored for a long-term retention in GCP object storage which is which is a far more cost efficient solution. So what is Haiku Haiku's secret sauce at the end of the day when it comes to uh, providing a holistic data protection solution for GCP? Our backups are extremely efficient and intuitive. Like you actually have the ability to seamlessly move your workloads to GCP or protect your workloads on GCP or even have multi-regional DR on GCP through a single click. I mean, we are, we are extremely intuitive and easy to use. Uh, the second thing that I'd like to point out is we are extremely fast when it comes to recovery as well because we have the ability to make use of your GCP snapshots, or we can also recover your backups in, a, in an efficient manner from your GCP object storage. Uh, when it comes to deployment, there is none, because all you have to do is just go ahead, click on the subscribe button, and, and you will be ready to, you know, you, all you have to do is basically like uh, spend 20 or 30 minutes uh, of your time like on, on like 
on a break because the entire deployment will happen at the back end where we will be able to automatically discover all of your environment and all of the underlying users and permissions. So you as an end user don't have to perform any of those manual installation or deployment. And when it comes to uh, discovery, there is none because the moment you upload the JSON file, we will be able to un you know, discover all of your underlying projects and the inventory of all of your uh, virtual machines running on GCP. So that is the true value of uh, Haiku where with, with all this capabilities and the intelligence that is built into the solution, we actually provide you the ability to seamlessly deploy our solution with zero effort needed to size or architect or deploy or even you know uh, uh, the amount of time it takes for you to learn our solution because our entire user interface is tied into GCP's terminology. And if you're a GCP user, you won't be a stranger to our solution. So that is what we offer at the end of the day. Now, I would love to showcase a detailed demo, but uh, I cannot do that today, which is why we have a dedicated webinar. It, it is the fourth webinar, which basically details on the best practices for a VDI data protection, backup and recovery. So uh, if you want to know more about our solution, please feel free to join us on the fourth webinar, which basically showcases how Haiku not only protects your GCP environment, but also ties in uh, you know, the entire story of how it can fit into your uh, virtual desktop and, you know, uh, your VDI environments or your virtual desktop provisioning on your GCP environment using Itopia. Thank you very much. So I'll pass the ball back to Brad. Thank, Thank you. you yeah, ahead, this is... Sorry. This is Ray. There are a few questions coming in, so if you guys don't mind, we can go ahead and kind of dive right into these, and I'll uh, cover these and direct them as we go through. Um, so one question that came in is someone said, do I have to create images from scratch, or can I bring my existing Citrix images to Itopia? So that's a great question. If the image runs on a server OS today, uh, we can utilize that existing image. If not, uh, we will have to recreate the image to run on a server OS. And again, we'll be happy to assist you all in doing that. And we do automate a lot of that function directly in our platform today. James, I think that this kind of goes to another question that came in, um, is who maintains those master images? So you do, right? So they actually exist in the customer's, um, you know, Google account. And every time you go to deploy, uh, you can actually deploy with that specific image. So we do have default images that are around, you know, server 2012 R2, 2016, as well as 2019. Uh, but ultimately, you know, once we recognize that Google project you're working in and the Google account, uh, we can display any of the images you created to make it very easy uh, to integrate that during the deployment phase. Great. Here's another uh, question that came in, and I think this one's for Thomas. How far does your monitoring go, and are you able to detect connection issues? Yeah, great question. Because um, it, it's... Um... Uh, it's true that we're one thing we're I would say one thing we're blind onto uh, as as everyone else is what's going on underneath the uh, the the cloud platform and the the, the server and that's something we're working on. However, where we put most of our our development and and focus is that connection thread. So we are able not only to look at what's going on inside the virtual machine running on on Itopia, but also the remote connection. So we'll monitor all the RDS. A connection from the Itopia all the way back to the endpoint device. We've extended that um, not only to see latency, packet drop, um, the number of, of um, um, I would say, um, hop that the connection tech will go deeper into the, um, the connection itself to look at what's being transferred, like graphic and sound and, and so on and so forth. We just recently added the ability to even look at what's going on on the back end that became uh, important recently with with everybody's working from home. So we have abilities, for example, to track 
um, uh, wireless signal. So we're able to actually detect when somebody's connecting from a wireless uh, connections and therefore explaining if something's slow and the ability to actually spread uh, a spotlight on what's going on on the back end. So it's not necessarily, you know, it's slow because it's it's Google Cloud, but it's it's actually your connection that's that's suffering uh, and therefore things are being slowed down. I hope it answered the question. Excellent. All right, uh, here's another one. Um, how does pricing work for Itopia? Do you support concurrent users? Yeah, so we do support concurrent users. And typically we suggest uh, to our customers that, you know, if you're around 30% to 40% concurrency, uh, then it makes uh, sense to use the concurrent uh, pricing. If not, we do have named user pricing. So our named user pricing starts at $12 per user per month. And then of course, the larger enterprises, uh, you know, we can work on custom offerings. And then we start for our concurrent licensing at $30 per user per month. Okay, and I, here's another related question. And I think this kind of goes to everyone unless someone's got a, a good key on this, but someone asked, could you know in a typical scenario of 100 or 1000 desktop computers, what would be the pricing of each solution? without including the consumption of GCP? Yeah, so um, I'll, I'll just kick it off. Uh, typically, a majority of our customers do go with named pricing. So if you do have a thousand users, uh, the Itopia uh, license, you know, would be $12,000 uh, per month total um, for managing this, this environment. I can speak this up. I can answer for Haiku. So for as far as Haiku is concerned, we go by capacity-based pricing, a capacity-based pricing if it's purely uh, for workloads on GCP. Uh, it basically comes down to two parameters. Uh, it is the capacity-based pricing and the RPO, like how uh, frequently you'd like to protect your uh, revision desktops on GCP. Um, now, we would be able to offer more discounts based on how you'd like to, uh, uh, you know, renew with us. So on a month month to month pricing, it would be a flat rate, but we will be able to offer more discounts uh, when it comes to uh, commitment. So we do have offer one, two, and th uh, I believe three year commits, uh, and based on that, we will be able to uh, offer a discounted pricing based on the capacity. And, and finally, on the liquider side, I don't have the numbers to share, but basically our licensing, all our products are licensed per user, uh, either named or concurrent, and you can choose between perpetual and subscription. Uh, I know our subscription basis, and of course it depends on the product you choose, um, are, are um, basically a few dollars a month uh, per user. We do not price for what's being deployed, the number of machine you monitor, so you could be monitoring a gazillion application server we don't care um we just price by by user and and ray i'll mention one thing as well since we did bring up price you know google is uh very incentivized to grow um you know their virtual desktop market and they also are very conscious of COVID 19 and and really the stress that it's really put on a lot of people's um you know end user compute resources so there is a very special promotion uh, going on uh, with Google today, and we'll be glad to talk about it in more detail. It's not a public promotion, um, but you maybe have an opportunity if you're willing to commit to a two-year to a four-year opportunity uh, where Google may subsidize you know, up to 20, 25% um, of the total value of the opportunity, including the Google consumption. So if that's of interest, um, you know, we'll be happy to talk further and then, of course, um, you know, that would include our partners as well uh, that we can help integrate, you know, to take advantage uh, of that discount, too. So just wanted to mention that to the group as well. That's great. That's good, great information. Um, here's another question that came in, and I think this one is um, aimed for you, James. And they ask, what display protocol is this using? This is using the RDP protocol. So again, it's a traditional RDP and it's really been optimized 
by you know Microsoft over the last you know six to eight years to uh, adapt to the cloud. So we do have customers that uh, do some video uh, as well as you know kind of GPU instances uh, that run through the environment. And we can also support things like audio. So uh, depending on the use case, you know, there, you know, we, we may not be a fit for every opportunity in the world, and I, I don't want to uh, claim that. But you know, for majority of the use cases that we come across, uh, the RDP protocol, you know, works fantastic. Fantastic. I think we got a couple more questions here. Um, someone asked. If we need to change to a bigger instance, for example, could you move users from one instance to another or maybe even back to their existing infrastructure if things don't work out? Yeah, that's that's really the great thing about, you know, deploying this in the cloud and then using Itopia as a management console. As you saw from my demo, you can very quickly uh, tap into a VM. You can increase the size of the VM with just a couple clicks of the button. And then you can also redeploy that image and all the virtual machines with one click. So if we wanted to go from, let's say, four CPU, uh, we can very quickly increase that to eight CPU. And again, we can scale back down when appropriate. So the total flexibility is there and all that can be done with a few clicks. Okay, um, someone else asked, could I know if VIDA licenses or Microsoft Access licenses should be taken into account in the total cost of a project? Yeah, that's a that's a great question. So there there are no operating system licenses in Google Cloud. When you pay for the Google consumption, uh, all the server licensing is baked into that cost. There is a RDS Cal, so a client access license that does need to be considered in your TCO. And that cost runs around $5 per user per month. Um, some customers of ours already have existing licensing that they can provide. And just one more comment regarding that, uh, that promotion from Google, uh, depending on the size of, of your deployment, uh, they would also be willing to uh, subsidize some of the RDS Cal licensing for a period of time uh, for you as well. Excellent. Well, I know we're we're running low on time, so we'll maybe take this one last question, and then I encourage anybody else that has any other questions beyond this to to reach out to anyone on the screen that you see there, whether it be Brad, James, uh, Tom, or Shiva, uh, for further questions. Um, but this last question is, how does Itopia compare to Amazon Workspaces? Yeah, that's a that's a fantastic question. So the one thing you're going to find is if you look at the name of their product is the first differentiator. So if you wanted to deploy a remote app and deploy a full desktop in the same deployment, you can't do that today. You have to set up two environments in AWS. Second is from a cost perspective. So they charge you either a flat monthly fee or a per hour fee. And the reason why they do that is because they do not give you, the customer, total access to all the infrastructure. So the ability to turn virtual machines on and off, being able to understand user patterns so you can uh, save costs on the consumption, uh, that's not available in Amazon Workspaces today because they set up one user per one virtual machine and they're able to kind of you know, turn resources on and off, uh, assuming that the user won't be on 24 by seven. So uh, we can deliver a price point that's typically 30 to 50% less than AWS. We give you full control of the infrastructure and ultimately you can deploy a remote app service or a full desktop uh, using Itopia on Google Cloud. All right, excellent. Um, one more question came in and I'll just cover it real quick. Um, someone asked if they can have a link to the recording. Yes, keep an eye on your inbox, uh, probably around sometime tomorrow for a link to the recording. We'll also include uh, links to register for the other three uh, sessions in this series. Um, they don't kick off until after the July 4th holiday, um, just to make sure that we've got everybody's attention and people have the time off that they need. Um, so keep an eye out for that. 
we'll also try to include some of the information about some of the details that we have in there and contact information for each of the groups. So that email will be chock full of information for you all. Um, so with that being said, I know we're over time. We're gonna give everybody their days back and get them back to their next meetings. So thank you, Brad, James, uh, Thomas, and Shiva for the presentation. And thank you all for joining us today. We look forward and hope to see you on uh, some of the other sessions as we dig into some more detail on this topic. Thank you all. Thank you. Thank you.